the final slide, then at that point, I, you know, my question are tricky. You won't be able to un, uh, answer. Okay. So last time we talked about the inverter, right? We say that in order to know the uh, delay of the inverter, we use 0 0.69 uh, RC. This is an approximation, but it's complicated enough for us in the invert in the uh, circuit. We say the R equivalent is given by this. Can like, we, we, of course, uh, we don't need to memorize the equation, but when we talk about this, can someone tell me how we derive this equation? You don't have to derive it, but you have an idea already how you derive this equation. Do you remember what did we do? Anyone remember? So let me guide you, right? Try to think about that, right? How do you find the resistance? Anyone can tell me what is resistance? I mean, fundamentally, it's V over I, right? V over I, okay. Then what V over what I? Should be the supply voltage over the drain. Current. Drain current, right? But more accurately, will it be the supply voltage or what voltage? We are finding the resistance through the transistor, right? For example, we are talking about uh, when we are charging up the device, the MOS is off, right? And then the PMOS is connected to a capacitor. This is CL and this is R equivalent, and we are charging up, right? We try to find the delay. And this E equivalent of course is this one right so so what is the voltage we are looking at you are right it is the drain current but how about the voltage what do you call it don't need to give me the right value but what voltage across it should be the voltage at the drain drain n we, when we talk voltage, there should be two terminals. Um, the drain and source. Drain and source, VDS, right? But then, as we said, thank you very much, right? Uh, we say when we are charging, the resistance is keep changing, right? Remember this curve, ID, VD, VDS, ID. So which point do we pick to calculate the resistance then? It should be um, VDD over two. VDD over two, right? That is a good guess. But last time what we said is, anyone remember, by the way? We say that it changed from VDD to VDD over two in the whole process, right? So this is the insight. Right, you, you don't need to spend time uh, to do some, so many derivation. What you need to take away with you is that you know that when you are charging the capacitor, it go from VDD to VDD over two. That is the definition of the propagation delay, right? 50% of the value, right? So just now only say that it is VDD over two. That is a good guess, take the midpoint. But more accurately, it go from VDD to VDD over two. So we take two resistance. One is VDD over two divided by ID set. Another, D, uh, one is VDD divided by ID set. Another is VDD over two divided by ID set. And then we find the FH. Then we get this resistance. Make sense? That's how we derive it. That's how we come up with that equation. Yes. So this schematic right here actually um, is the same thing in our homework question three, except the second stage in this particular slide is being represented in the transistor form, but in the homework, we're just showing the digital logic symbol. Is that right? Yeah, I forgot what home homework is. Yeah, but something similar. This is just the loading, yeah. Okay, because... I was just uh, curious about that. All mm -hmm. right. Yeah. 
So, so here I want to emphasize again, right? How you study this class. We go over the map. You, you see that in the exam, I don't ask you to derive anything difficult, right? We do have some simple substitution, but not much derivation. The most important is the concept. So I spent the whole slides to, or 10 minutes, 15 minutes to show you how to derive the R equivalent. Maybe that becomes useless. But you need to remember is how we derive it. And you link immediately to the definition of propagation. Uh, this type of le learning or knowledge will help you later when you have other definition, right? Like your company may come up with another definition because your customer have a different requirement. Then you know that you take this effort. And this is what you really learn and useful to you in the future, but not this equation. Right. And then we talk about the loading of the capacitance. We say that, okay, we need to charge up this part, right? So we need to first, we need to charge up this free capacitance and then this free also. Do you remember what do we call this free capacitance? This free capacitance, CGD1, CG, CBD1, CBD2. There are two names, right? One is called intrinsic, one is called extrinsic. Which one is intrinsic? Which one is extrinsic? Uh, these are uh, intrinsic capacitance. The, these, these are intrinsic, yes, very good. And then the rest are extrinsic, yeah, thank you. Now, why this is important? Because this tells you the philosophy. When you think about driving something, you immediately Aware of some, aware of the fact that you have intrinsic and extrinsic capacitance. If I want to run faster, I need to make myself stronger and eat more. But I cannot eat too much because when I get too big, my intrinsic weight is going to stop me my, from running fast. Right? I make my stronger so I can uh, get rid of the air friction or whatever. That is the extrinsic resistance. Right? So then you immediately have understand this one. And in the future, when you do the design, you're aware of this, right? Here after all, is just an example, okay? And just want you to be very careful. We have, after we all the elevation, we have renamed the capacitor and we just call them as one and two. And now the one here means stage one. And the two here means stage two instead of M2 or M1. We lump CD, maybe I can say here one more time, right? We lump all the transistor, CD12, CGD12, CDB2, and CDB1 into CDP1 and CDN1, which means it is the drain capacitance of the PMOS in the first stage, drain capacitance of the NMOS in the first stage. Okay, any questions? I had a question regarding what is extrinsic? Like, is that due to like the supply voltage or? Okay, or... so the concept here is that I have a driver. This is the driver. This is something help me to propagate the signal from in to out. Is that okay? It's just like the engine. And you need to drive a few capacitors. Some capacitors belongs to this driver. So that's why it's intrinsic. Because later you will see that if I make my driver stronger, the intrinsic capacitance will be also larger. Means it cancel out the effect. And then there are other capacitors not belong to this driver that it try to drive. That's called extrinsic. Does not belong to this driver. Make sense? So it's the capacitance coming from the second stage. That's the extrinsic part? Or whatever not belong to the driver, including the wire capacitance. Okay, so the CDB2 and CDB1, those are intrinsic uh, capacitance like that. Yes. Kind of parasitic capacitance that we see for the transistor model at high frequency. Yes. Okay. 
the thing about this, I need to lift the weight. When I lifting the weight, the weight is the extrinsic weight, but my hand also has weights, right? I also need to spend energy to lift up my hand in order to lift the weight. So my arm is the intrinsic load. The weight is the extrinsic load. Make sense? Yeah, that makes sense for us. Right. If sense. I make my arm really, really big, very, very muscular, I of course can lift the weight much easier, but it means I also need to spend more energy to lift my arm because my arm is heavier now. That's why we need to distinguish this in the optimization. Because I cannot just say, make myself infinite, infinitely strong, then I can lift the weights easily. No, because when my arm is so strong, so big, I actually waste a lot of energy just to lift my arm. Okay. A very good question, right? Now, then we talk about how to calculate that. This can be just a table, so don't worry. But you need to have the insight. You see that we talk about different region of operation. We say that during the transition, CGD is just the overlapping capacitance times two due to the, do you remember why we times two? Anyone remember? Miller effect. Miller effect, very good. Yeah, because uh, the input and output are switching in the opposite direction, right? But more importantly, you see, it depends on the width. This is what I'm saying, like my arm. Later, when I make my transistor very big, very strong, I also increase CGD. Just like I make my arm very strong to lift the weight, I also increase the weight of my arm. So I need to waste energy to lift up my arm. That is one thing. Same for the junction capacitance. These are the CDB, right? Again, they also for they are also going to depends on the width. If it's wider, you remember the junction is going to be wider, right? Let me remind you. You won't, although it wastes you some time, but I think this is good to always remind yourself because later, if you work on thin fat, it might be different. Depends on. Uh, the application, right? So you see that this is the junction capacitance, CDB. If it is wider, I have more capacitance. Okay. Finally, we call this fan out or just the extrinsic capacitance. What does it depend on? It depends on the next stage, W and L. These are the next stage, W and L. Okay. We derive all this already. Uh, any questions about this? Okay, if no, then that, yeah, any questions? So the CGDO, that's the intrinsic capacitance, right? The O part, sub zero? O part means, remember what is that? Overlap. Overlap. It can be intrinsic, it can be extrinsic. Right? It is intrinsic in here for CGD because it is talking about the overlap of the driver capacitance. It is extrinsic here for here because it's talking about the overlap of the loading capacitance. We both have CGDO in two places. Is that okay? Because the driver itself has an overlap capacitance. The load also has its overlap capacitance. Got it. Okay, great.